All right, what's your name? Debbie Raymond. And uh, Debbie, what do you do for the company? I drive the bus and do narration. Okay, so what are we? Where, where are we going today? We're going to be doing a short tour around the Biloxi Peninsula. Um, basically, we cover most of the peninsula that is Biloxi. It's a 12-mile peninsula, so we'll be doing down here at the East End. All right, thanks a lot. You're welcome. All right, here's the uh, here's the shuttle. Historical Biloxi Tours. I don't know if they told you, but this building, the Harbor Master's office, after Katrina came in, it completely gutted the first two levels. When they went on the third level, they found all of the computers and papers right where they left it. Oh. So, now we are going to talk some about Katrina. Uh, we did have history before Katrina. It's just now she's such a large part of our history. So we will be talking a little bit about the prehistory of Katrina. The sculpture garden. These trees did actually grow in a cluster. You'll see groupings of them up and down the median. The first man came in was Mr. Scoggins, and he decided to make a sculpture using a chainsaw for us. Well, Marlon Miller is the artist that has done most of the work up and down the beach for us. He came out of Fort Walton Beach. We had helped them out after one of their storms, so he came down here and helped us make our dead trees into art. Now here's the uh, Katrina Sculpture Garden. Monument to the, what happened. Uh, you see all these uh, wooden uh, carvings by artists. And there's the biggest dead tree sculpture right there. Look at that. It's made out of an eagle. There, flying, a needle resting on top, and a wing, an extending wing. It's awesome. This is the old Biloxi Cemetery. We do have a headstone that dates back to 1710 here. Uh, we have some of our local characters, George Orr, the bad potter of Biloxi, and Pleasant Reed, who is a man who is very talented with the carpenter. Okay. The Biloxi Lighthouse is listed by the Tourism Commission as one of the most photographed images in the state of Mississippi. It was brought down from Maryland in 1848 and it's made of cast iron. It was lined with local brick and at one time it did sit immediately on the beach. However, when they created this military superhighway, this lighthouse became famous for being the only lighthouse that stands in the middle of a four-lane highway. There's the sign. Constructed in, constructed in 1848, and there's the lighthouse right in the middle of the highway. In 1699, you have two French-Canadian brothers come into this area. Their names were Pierre Le Moines Sir D'Iberville and his brother D'Enville. And they came ashore, and the Biloxi Indians welcomed them after a while when they discovered they were friendly. And so they established a fort here. And Fort Marapa over at Ocean Springs is where they established that. And then, of course, the French founded this area. But later on, you had the Spanish capture it. So we, we've had a lot of influence from the Europeans. Uh, but again, we're very diverse in our culture. And this is St. Michael's Catholic Church. It's known as the Church of the Fishermen. The Fishermen families had raised every bit of money for this church before the cornerstone was laid. In the glass, it depicts the apostles, the fisher of men, and there are fish within that stained glass boat peak as well. Now we have a showing of the difference between Camille and Katrina. If you look through the post, through the front of the bus, you're going to see what looks like small white waves put there by someone who lived here that remembers the water being that high from Camille. If you look at the post over here on the side, you're going to see a blue mark put there by the city. And that is the height for Katrina. Now keep in mind those are the steady water pipes, not with the waves on top. What a difference. Uh -huh. What a difference. That's how high Katrina was. Now, now this is the Oro Keep Museum of Art. Frank Gehry, the architect, designed these and he designed them to where they dance with the trees. The silver pots have the work of George Orr, as well as other rotating exhibits. Right now they have Andy Warhol and Richard Barclay. 
exhibits. And uh, there's the namesake. And this is the Camille Memorial. We have the names of the dead and missing as well as the unknown here on the wall. And of course we have a beautiful mosaic tile by Elizabeth Vaguely, a local artist. And that depicts the eye of a hurricane. Your water level again is the height of the wall. The bent flagpole was done as a celebration of the anniversary, one of the anniversaries of Camille. Welcome to the Katrina Memorial. This was built by Extreme Home Makeover and some of the other people. Wanted to show you the found objects in the case. Now these are items that people found on their land after the storm. And when they dedicated this, they brought them in and they put them in the case. Those who did not have their items put in the case were able to bury it in the time capsule. These are the names of those who were deceased during Katrina. And the wall is the height of the way, or actually of the water right here. Wow, it was that high. Yes. Now, of course, this is at the Katrina Memorial. This piece was done by Marlon Miller. You saw some of his works before. It's the only painted uh, sculpture, and that was done by his wife, Renee. And, of course, they took, and whatever they see in the tree, they carved with the chainsaw. Now, we do have more Elizabeth Bagley's work. She did the wave. She did this wave for the Katrina Memorial, and you saw the Eye of the Hurricane mosaic at the Camille Memorial. 